So with Ed Sheeran having won his recent copyright infringement case, the question now becomes, how did he get away with stealing Let's Get It On? Kidding, I'm kidding. But looking at this trial, I was thinking if there was some way, somehow, some YouTuber could explain just a few minutes of music theory so that in the future, people understand why these cases shouldn't even make it to court. Well, then that YouTuber should do that. It's me, I'm the YouTuber. Okay, I'm gonna throw some stuff quick at you, so feel free to pause if you need to. Every song is in a key, and the key tells you which notes belong in the song. It also tells you what chords to play to sound like they belong in the song. Something that would be out of key is like, your friend trying to sing at a karaoke bar. Okay, so let's say we're in the key of D major, for example. What chords are diatonic to or belong to the key? That would be D major, E minor, F sharp minor, G major, A major, B minor, and C sharp diminished. Major chords sound happy, minor chords sound sad, and diminished chords will say sound crunchy. There are the exact same amount of major, minor, and diminished chords in every key. I know it's a lot, but you're doing well. Keep following. Now, each of these chords are referred to by a Roman numeral, one through seven. Now, if if I asked you, maybe you're a non-music person, hey, pick four of those chords to write a song with. You might say, hmm, how about one, two, three, and four? You can try writing a song with those chords in that order, but something tells me it won't be very good. In fact, music has been around for so long that we actually do know what combinations sound good or pleasant to the ear. Good music practices tension and release, and to do that, we usually start with a tonic or a home chord. It could really be anything, but for us, let's say that it's D major. Then we'd move to something that adds a little tension, and we call that a predominant chord. For us, that's G major. And then we really need to peak that tension, and we'll use a dominant chord for that. For us, that'll be A major. And after that, we're done. We have our hit. I'm kidding, but that pattern that I just followed, the tonic to predominant to dominant back to tonic, that's like the most common thing you can do in popular music. And if you look at how this key works, how it's structured, there's only so many chords that fill each role of that pattern. Take a minute to pause if you need to. What I just specifically described to you is called a one, four, five progression. And it's like the first progression you learn in music theory 101 because it's so common. And yes, that is the chord progression for thinking out loud. Thinking out loud goes D then D over F sharp, which just means, hey, take the F sharp note in the D chord and just play it on a different string on the guitar, G and A. All right, so now pretend you're in the courtroom and a very official looking guy in an official looking suit comes up to you and plays thinking out loud and then let's get it on. And he goes, see, aren't they the same chords? Didn't they do the same thing? And you might feel like you should say yes. And you wouldn't even really be wrong if you did. Like we said, the chords in Ed's song are D, D over F sharp, G, and then A. And the chords in Marvin Gaye's song adjusted to be in the same key are D, F sharp minor, G, and A. But as you and I just learned, using the same chords in the same order does not mean you wrote the same song. In this case, it means you know how to write pleasant sounding music. And I say in this case, because it really depends on intention, right? You could have two artists who use the same formula to get to something that sounds really harsh or dissonant or weird, right? It doesn't have to be a pleasant song. But if you want to entertain a technical argument now, because you and I are up to speed on the theory we need, let's do it. Firstly, no, these two songs didn't even do the same thing on paper. That second chord difference right there, that changes so much much about each song's intention. That F sharp minor chord that Let's Get It On uses, that's what's harmonically responsible for the song's sexy feel. In this context, it's a chord that has a tinge of sadness, desperation, or longing to it. Ed uses a major chord in this position instead, something happier, stable, more wholesome. Just listen to what each implies. Marvin wrote a song about having sex, and Ed wrote a song about loving someone forever. Marvin's putting himself out there because he has no idea what's gonna happen with his lover after he puts his feelings on the line, and Ed knows exactly what's gonna happen. They're gonna get married. You can hear it in that chord difference, and you can also hear it in pretty much every other aspect of the song. No way, no how, in any universe, in any Marvel movie, does thinking out loud step on Let's Get It On's toes in the cultural zeitgeist. There is no function you will attend where someone will play thinking out loud and then someone goes, Hey, yo, bro, put on the original. Put on Let's Get It On. Like, what? And vice versa. No one's gonna hear Let's Get It On and go, Nah, bro, can you change it to the better version? That, the Ed Sheeran version. Yeah. Again, what? <laughs> they are completely different in genre, intention, timbre, mood, 
lyrical content, melody, and pretty much everything else besides those three chords. And that's really what was at stake here in this trial. Can you challenge the essential building blocks of a song? We just went through how limited the combinations really are. If Ed lost, it'd be like saying no artist can use the color yellow in a painting anymore. And while yes, we just reviewed how limited chord combinations are, that applies to so many other parts of music. I mean, Pharrell and Robin Thicke got sued for blurred lines because it copied the feel of a Marvin Gaye song. And that was just because that song and the Marvin Gaye song used the same groove and percussion sounds. We're at the point where there are billions of human beings and a lot of them make art. Statistically, you're gonna get a lot of coincidences if everyone's ears enjoy a one, four, five chord progression or a cowbell. Spoiler alert, they do. I will show you the only way Ed Sheeran should have gotten sued right now. I'm about to play an unreleased version of Thinking Out Loud. Check this out. When your legs don't work like they used to before. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out this one where I break down Haley Williams' vocal range. She's she's from Paramore, if you didn't know.